water. It's one of planet Earth's most fundamental resources. You'd have thought by now that scientists would have discovered all there is to know about it. Yet here at the University of Warwick, a team of scientists who study water particles as small as a nanometer are making new discoveries all the time. Heading the research is Stefan Bonn. My group works on a combination between polymer chemistry and colloid chemistry. The area is then called polymer colloids. And uh, what we do is that we uh, work in an area which we call supracolloidal chemistry, which is playing with little particles on interfaces and assembling them like Lego blocks. It's a combination of two things. And one thing is that we play with emulsions. And an emulsion is something similar to like Bailey's or mayonnaise. It means that one phase that doesn't like another phase is dispersed. For instance, uh, oil and water don't mix. And if you mix them really quickly, you get very small droplets of one and the other. That's called an emulsion. And we use emulsions as a template to assemble tiny little particles around it. And when you do that, that's an effect called Pickering emulsion, which is, which is more than 100 years old, actually. The first person uh, described this in 1903, which was Ramsden. And uh, nobody really noticed that paper. And then in 1907, a guy called Pickering wrote a really nice paper on it. And that's why these emulsions that are stabilized with particles are called Pickering emulsion. And then we can make hollow structures with it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. OK. I'm Patrick Culver. Yeah, I'm a second year PhD student. I did my undergraduate here and uh, decided to stay on with Stefan in order to do the PhD. Stefan's basically the idea factory. He, uh, he comes in every morning after dreaming about different strange ideas and uh, comes in. Uh, I'm the guy that tries it out first. We would like to work on a scale that is very small, which is like a nano scale. And why do you want to assemble very tiny little Lego blocks and not really big ones? Well, big ones, you know, if you go to the shop and you can just ha hand assemble them. Uh, we want to work on a scale that's way smaller. So, for instance, if you take a 5p coin and you put it on a site and you would slice it into a million pieces, that's the kind of scale we work on, which is the nanometer scale. And for that, we need very, very small droplets. And therefore, we need a lot of energy. And that's why we use ultrasound. So ultrasound is capable of dispersing oil in water and making the droplets really small, like 50 nanometer to 100 nanometer. And that's the scale we're working at. And then the particles that we use are even smaller. So we use clay particles, for instance, that are 25 nanometers by one, which is like a hockey puck disc. And they assemble really nicely around this tiny little droplet, which is a 100 nanometer, 200 nanometer. And that's the area we work in. These non-spherical particles that Stefan makes, I mean, no one ever thought of making these things the way that Stefan has. And he just went, oh, I'll tell you what would be a fun idea. Just try making some of these pickering motions and pass them through a tube over and over again and just see what happens. And it made nice non-spherical particles. And uh, also uh, these structures that are called hypes, um, which are high internal phase emulsions. Uh, he just went, usually we make uh, oil in the center of a droplet and polymerize that. What if you have water in the center, but the rest of it uh, monomer? Shake it up and then polymerize that. And you actually get these nice uh, structures formed, 3D structures. And other ones are when we used clay to stabilize the, the uh, mini emulsions. He said, well, what happens if you burn all the polymer off? Just see what happens. So we put it in the oven at 600 degrees, and we actually get like a ceramic network formed. It's all just different structures that he forms by just thinking, what will you try if you do this? At the moment, we do uh, collaborative research with a number of industries, really, because um, they felt like if you could combine very small particles on more complex structures, it could have an, a number of, of benefits, for instance. So we're working with uh, some coatings industries in order to, to, to make a hybrid material between laponite clay, in this particular case, which is a very, very small nano-sized hard material, a little bit like sand, and, and a traditional latex, which is used, for instance, for ordinary coatings in cars, or you know, if you decorate your house, uh, waterborne latex, to, uh, that's, that's the type of material. Now, if you combine those two things together, you, for instance, can make a scratch-resistant coating, which is beneficial. You know, if people have a car and someone comes across with a, with a, with a key, and you, know, you don't really want that to show up. And that's, that's an advanced application of a hybrid coating that industry, for instance, is really interested in. This area uh, of pickering emulsions, like I said, is really old. But not until now that we have the capabilities of actually characterizing these structures with, for instance, advanced microscopes, electron microscopes, that we really can zoom into the nanoscale and we can actually understand these materials. We can make commercially interested products out of this. And we can really guide the properties that we want to have. So um, 
the areas we are looking into, for instance, is coatings. We're looking at self-healing composites together with Delft University. Um, we're starting to look at photonic type of materials, so fuel cell applications and, uh, and battery applications. And we're looking into biological scaffolds for tissue regeneration based on assembling particles around a bigger structure. I kind of say, well, where, where do we go from here? And, and Stefan says, well, give me a couple of days. I'll think of something up. And then he'll come in and say, oh, I've got a good idea. Why don't we try this and move on? So I really don't know where it's going to end up at the end. It all depends on where, where Stefan decides that uh, he would like to take it. It's pretty amazing what we can do. And we learn more and more every day. Like uh, a few weeks ago, someone from Delft University came to us and said, well, you know, it would be really cool if droplets wouldn't be a sphere. And we were like, can we do that? And we fiddled around a little bit in this lab. And now we can make droplets that look like cucumbers, for instance, which is fantastic. And if you then think way, way ahead, then for applications, cucumber-shaped droplets would do brilliant in, uh, in, in self-healing composites, for instance, in airplane wings. Uh, so that's, that's why they approached us. With that. They, they were an, an aerodynamics uh, group, and they approached us with, with that particular case. So yeah. And, and we, we were not aware that we could do this on large scale and you know, we played around a little bit and, and suddenly it was there. And I think that's really amazing.